Hi guys, it's Jasmine with Jazzy Crafts and Cards. Let me show you what we're making today. Today I have a fun project for you using um, holographic embossing powder. There we go, you can kind of see that there. So what I've done um, is this is a napkin card that I've actually made into a postcard um, using a napkin and that holographic embossing powder. So here are all the materials you're going to need. Um, a package of cocktail napkins. These I just found at my local Dollar Tree. Um, they're just small beverage napkins. They have several designs. This one I thought was kind of pretty, so this is the one I got. This is Whispers Clear Glitter Embossing Powder, and this is a holographic. Okay. I'm going to be using a glue stick. This, I think I just got at Walmart. It's Elmer's Craft Bond Extra Strength, and it works very well for this project. I'll be using a pen to draw the lines on the back of my postcard, as well as a lettering aid um, to get straight lines. You'll need a piece of white um, cardstock. We'll be cutting this down later. I've got a piece of thin cardboard here. This is actually from a package, um, like a small thin box. So that's what I've cut down to this size from that. You could also probably use a piece of thin chipboard. Uh, Versamark, my heat tool, and my ATG gun we'll also be using. Alright, so I'm going to zoom you in and let's get started. Alright, so what I'm going to do first, guys, is I'm going to measure my piece of cardboard that I have here. Like I said, I just cut this off of a um, piece of packaging. So this was the largest size I could get off of that small box that I had. So I'm going to make my postcard this exact size. I'm going to use this as the back of my postcard. So I want to know what size it is. And it's about four and a quarter by four and three quarters. Um, so that's the size I'm going to cut my piece of white cardstock down to. Now, I didn't get it cut very exact, <laughs> um, but I'm actually going to, that's okay, because I'm going to cut it actually a little bit smaller, because I think I want, like I did on this one, I've got a little bit of a border around um, the napkin piece where you can see that uh, piece of cardboard through, and I kind of like that, so I'm going to actually cut my piece of cardstock down a little bit more. I'm going to cut it to four. four by four and a half and I think that'll be right where I want it. See how that'll leave us a nice border around um, of that brown. I think I like that. Okay. Now I'm not going to need the trimmer again so I'm going to put that to the side. I am going to um, take the napkin and open it up and you can see I already used one of the pieces um, for the sample and I'm going to cut off another panel of that napkin and as you can tell depending on which side you use um, the butterfly and the flower will be flipped so let's see on this one I've got my butterfly on the right hand side with this wording that they've got in the lower right corner. So that would be this panel if I wanted it. I'm going to go ahead and, and just use this panel here. Um, so it'll be opposite of what we already have. So I'm going to cut that right on that fold. Just using a pair of scissors. Okay. Also you can tell that if you buy a package of Dollar Tree napkins, you will get you could get a lot potentially um, a lot of cards or postcards out of it because there's four per sheet. So on these napkins, they are kind of two ply, so you need to separate uh, the white backing from that colored front, and it should pull apart pretty easily as long as you're careful not to rip it. Um, it's not too hard. 
okay. Now, if you know of something that you can do with this white piece, then by all means save it and use it. I don't, I haven't found anything to do with them, so I just toss them. All right, so you're left with this um, really thin piece of the napkin, and you're only going to need that and your white piece of cardstock and your glue stick for right now, okay? I like to kind of eyeball where I think I want this to fall on my piece of paper because wherever that it's on the paper, that's the only part we're going to use. We're going to cut the extra away. So I kind of think I'm just going to line it up. And you probably can't. Well, he can maybe tell. Um, you can maybe see that piece of white card stuck under there. I'm going to line it up so this butterfly is right next to the edge there. That way I am left with most of this flower still on the page. Okay, so now that I kind of have an idea of where I want it on my piece of paper, I'm going to flip that napkin over upside down because I'm going to put the glue on this white piece of cardstock and then lay it on top of the napkin where I want it. Okay? So, like I said, this is just a Elmer's Craft Bond glue stick. I'm going to apply it all over this piece of white cardstock. And I'm going to lay a piece of copy paper under it just so that I don't get glue all over my mat here. Okay, so just putting that white glue stick all over that piece of white cardstock pretty liberally because I really want that napkin to stick to it. And I'm going to kind of use my light to look at the sheen of that glue and make sure I'm not missing any spots. Okay, looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to move that piece of white copy paper so I don't get glue on my napkin. I'm going to put my napkin down, like I said, upside down on my work surface, and I'm going to flip it, my piece of white cardstock over so that that gluey side is on the bottom. And looking at my design on my napkin, I'm going to line this piece up um, as best I can where I want it on that piece of napkin. Okay, and then I'm just going to really push that glue into the napkin and you can see I actually pushed so hard I ripped the napkin that's okay we're gonna cut that away anyway all right so now we're going to as this kind of dries on there I'm going to use my scissors to trim around um, that piece of white cardstock just cutting away that excess napkin Here it kind of was curled under, so I'm just going to cut that off. All right. Okay. Now you can see where I kind of was pushing too hard on the back of that napkin, and it, well, let's see. You can see some white here from that cardstock on the back. I'm not going to fuss about that. I've actually made one of these where I have intentionally torn off a little bit of the napkin all the way around the edge just by kind of um, dampening my finger a little bit and pulling some of that napkin off the corners and things like that. So I actually kind of like the way that looks. See there? It kind of pulled up a little bit more. And so I'm just going to, I can just tear that away and make it kind of distressed looking around the edge. Um, and I kind of like the way that looks. So. I'm going to go ahead and do it. You can also take like a pencil eraser and do the same thing. And just kind of erase and it has enough pull that it drags some of that napkin off around the edges. And I kind of like the way that looks. And you can even see right here it wasn't glued down enough. If you don't like the distressed look, by all means, make sure that it's glued down well um, and let it fully dry before you mess with it. That way you don't have any of those edges pulling up. Like I said, I kind of like it. So I'm going to find some of the edges and kind of 
use this eraser to kind of help me drag some of that napkin off. kind of randomly going around the edges and pulling some of that off. Okay. Fair warning, that does make a mess. You get the eraser bits and the napkin bits. Okay. So now I've got those white spaces around the card, which I like, but I'm going to color them in. So I'm going to use some distress inks too. You could use a marker, whatever you have, or like I said, you can just leave the napkin um, glued all the way to the edges and not do that. I think I want to pick up some of this kind of um, orange maybe, and I'm going to use, just because I've got them handy here, some Tim Holtz distress ink, uh, and I think this spiced marmalade will work well. So I'm just going to take that and just straight from the ink um, pad here. I'm just going to kind of drag it onto those white areas. I might even lay down my piece of white copy paper here. And I'm just going to ink those white areas. Love that. I think that looks really neat. Okay, so we took an extra step there, but that's okay. So now I am going to actually use the same piece of copy paper here, and I'm going to ink up the entire surface of this with my Versamark. Okay. I'm just going to dab it across the whole napkin. And again, I'm going to use my light to make sure that sheen kind of covers the whole thing. And if it doesn't, I'm going to go back in and just fill in those spots. Okay. I think that's fine. So now very careful not to touch on that surface. I'm just going to kind of pick this up by the sides and move this piece of paper because I don't want all that sticky versa mark underneath. And I am going to lay down another piece of um, just regular copy paper underneath to catch my um, embossing powder. I haven't transferred this to a bowl yet with a spoon um, for scooping, so I'm just going to do the pour method. Okay, so I'm just going to apply this really liberally and we're going to shake it all around and try to cover the entire surface. And I also forgot to mention, if you want to add a sentiment to this um, on the front, you can add, you can glue down a piece of white cardstock and stamp on it or whatever you want to do, but I would do that before you add this embossing powder because that makes the surface rough um, and then things don't really want to stick as well. I am not adding a sentiment today, so I'm not worried about that. Okay. Just applying more to get this other side over here. And then I'm going to kind of tap it off. All right. And I'm going to replace all this embossing powder into my jar. And this is why this isn't my favorite method of doing this, because it is hard to get it all back in there. Much easier if you put this in a bowl and use a spoon. Okay. Plus, there's a lot of embossing powder all over my surface. And if you do not like loose glitter, you will probably not like this, unless you've got unless you've got this powder in a bowl, like I said, with a spoon, because otherwise it's it gets everywhere. Okay. So now I'm going to 
return to this original piece of scrap paper and just lay that back on there um, to use my heat tool on because on a work surface like this and when I can't touch the surface of the project um, a lot of times the air from my heat gun will blow it around. This way I can use the corner of this to kind of hold that piece of paper in place and I don't burn my fingers or mess up the project. So that's what I'm doing there. Um, so now, like I said, I'm going to let my heat tool heat up for a little bit before I use it on the project so that it will um, be hot enough to melt the embossing powder and we'll see what it looks like when I'm done. All right. All right, I'm gonna bring this up closer. Hopefully you guys can see that really pretty shine on there. Oh yeah, look at that. So I really like this embossing powder for this because you can still see that image very clearly. Um, and if you liked these words here, you could still even read the words. Um, but when it catches that light, it has got so much shine. Look at that. So that looks really cool to me. And I'm glad that I kind of roughed up the edges of that napkin and added that extra color in there. I think that looks really nice. Okay. So now to attach it onto my um, piece of cardboard here, I'm gonna use my ATG gun to um, attach it. You could probably get by using the same uh, glue stick or whatever wet glue you're fond of. I just happen to like the ATG, and so that's what I'm going to use. I am going to make sure I get this as close as I can to the edge of my white cardstock here on the back um, because I don't want it to peel up during mailing, especially because it's going to be a postcard rather than just a regular card. Okay. I want to make sure I don't care for either one of these sides any better because I'm going to be writing on one of the sides. This one kind of has some lines on it, so I'm going to glue this to this side. Alright. So there's what it looks like so far. Um, now because my image isn't going... Um, isn't right side up along the long edge of the card. I am just going to flip it like this, and then this is going to be where my stamp goes on my postcard here. That's what I did on this one as well. So, okay. So, to make this look like a postcard on the back, like I said, I'm using my lettering aid. Um, and I'm going to actually line it up this way at first. I'm going to kind of find the halfway mark or a little further to the right um, because this area only needs to have the address in the stamp so it doesn't need to be very large. Um, so I'm just going to line this up along one of these lines here so that I know that it'll be straight. And I'm just going to trace a line from top to bottom on here. Okay, so I didn't do quite half. I made this side a little bit smaller here and this side bigger for the writing. Alright. Now I can line, um, I'm gonna, this is where the stamp's going to be, so I'm going to go down a little bit further. Okay. So again, I'm just going to line that up, and actually I'm going to line it with the edge so that it, um, I, so that I know the lines are going straight. Okay, so I, can you see how I've got it aligned here at the edge? Okay. Now I'm going to just draw a line, whoops, that kind of went crazy, draw three lines. evenly spaced for the address. Okay. So that's where my address is gonna, going to go. Um, you could draw lines on this side if you wanted uh, for writing your message on. I'm not going to in this instance. I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay. Well, that was it, guys. That's an easy project. Um, 
I did want to share, I made another one of these beforehand where I attached the napkin straight to the piece of cardboard instead of attaching it to white cardstock and then to the cardboard um, to see if I could save a step and it worked. So you can see I did this with a um, American flag napkin and I did attach kind of a, a quote down here at the bottom. It did work, but you can see that that is kind of warped. Maybe you can see. It's kind of warped because of that embossing. Um, this one, because I did the embossing on the white piece of cardstock, is not nearly as warped. And it's more sturdy because it's got that extra layer of paper in there. This will hold up, I think, much better going through the mail than this will. But it would work in a pinch. Okay. So, that's what I've got, guys. Um, very easy and like I said you could make this and attach it just to the front of a card and get a beautiful card or like I said you can try it as a postcard all right thanks for watching this is Jasmine again with Jazzy Crafts and Cards thanks